uh, our message to chief execs is that if you want change in your organisation, then you also have to change. In other words, it's the policies, it's procedures, it's the things that you measure that are causing the problems within your business. Therefore, you have to change. And, and the great thing that Dale Carnegie offered was, you know, the chief exec can sit in his room and we'll take the people away and we'll bring them back and we'll change them. But, of course, it never worked because um, what I now know is that behaviour is a product of the system that you put people in. Um, it, it, you can't specify behaviour um, and put people into a dysfunctional system. It's always the system that drives the behaviour. Now, the way Vanguard work is the first, thing, first conversation that you have with any chief executive or corporate director is um, a fish rots from the head conversation. You know. If your organisation requires performance to be improved, then that's down to you. You know, whatever the performance is today is because of you. So if you want to improve performance, you've got to be prepared to change the way you think about how the organisation works. The objective is that the leader has an overview from a Vanguard perspective or systemic uh, perspective of what's going on in his organisation driven from the outside in. So we start with where and how do customers come in, um, what are they asking for and understanding the nature of those demands, um, the levels of failure demand in the system and then following some of the value demands through and unravelling how much waste is in the system and very importantly what's causing it um, in terms of those system conditions but vitally making the link back to what is the drivers of the management in terms of the thinking and how they've designed the system that has caused that waste and sub-optimisation. Once they've got that knowledge, they're starting that journey of, oh dear, oh crikey, yes, I am accountable and responsible, I reside over this, now am I brave enough, am I prepared to uh, let myself go, let my, you know, roll my sleeves up, get into the work with my people um, and really build a, a deep and uh, detailed picture of how it's all wired together because it's only with that knowledge that they're in a, an informed position to make uh, de good decisions about where and how to change. It's, it's, it's absolutely fundamental to the success of, of any attempt to introduce systems thinking to an organisation that senior leaders take responsibility for establishing and maintaining the new system. And the, the way I describe it to, to senior leaders and clients is that it's their job to, to quit worrying about the results, uh, quit worrying about you know, making, making demands on their staff to produce results and to start worrying about the extent to which people are living by a new set of systems principles. Now, that, that, to bring that to life requires a lot of time and effort and commitment from senior leaders. And, and my experience with senior people is they're very, very busy, they're very enthusiastic early, early doors in an intervention. And, you know, the longer you go through time, the more likely they are to kind of drift away and, and neglect a fledgling systems design in an organisation. And so it's absolutely crucial, you know, once you start getting into the implementation phase, that the senior leaders are there, they're taking responsibility for helping people learn how to work to a new set of principles and ideas. If they do that, the results will take care of themselves. And um, once you've seen what, what the problems are, the solutions are, are, are always, always obvious. But the problem is, is that for most chief execs, what they're reluctant to do is go down into the work and understand the problems in the work. They're very comfortable um, working, you know, in effect, outside the system, thinking about things like strategic direction. But in order to have strategic direction, you have to have two things. One, you have to understand what matters to your customers, and two, you have to, underst well, you have to understand who your customers are, what matters to them, and the capability of your organisation to be able to deliver against what matters to customers.